The big theme of the week, as usual, was lying. There was an extraordinary amount of lying. At this point, the people in charge seem like they tell the truth only by accident. Occasionally, somebody in power will say something true and is swiftly punished for it. Can't have that. It's infuriating to watch, but it's also, if you look at it right, very amusing. These are not sophisticated deceptions. This is not Dwight Eisenhower stealthily planning D-Day. This is your five-year-old ambling in with frosting on his face to tell you he never touched the birthday cake. Should that make you mad? Of course it should make you mad. But if you're human, you will also laugh at it. Cake? What cake? It's hilarious. The kid has no idea how ridiculous he is. And that's the thing about so many of these lies. You don't believe them, but you're not special. Nobody believes them, even the people repeating them. And nowhere is that more true than on the question of the climate emergency. Okay, so you can buy that or not. And by the way, a lot of good people, some smart people, people of good faith do believe that, and that's okay. But do the people telling you that believe it? Does Joe Biden actually think that climate change is code red for humanity? Well, don't listen to what he says. Watch what he does. This week, Biden spoke to Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, about how terrifying this climate emergency is. But he didn't talk to Trudeau on Zoom. No! Instead, he flew on a private airplane to the capital of Canada, Ottawa, where he and Justin Trudeau drove around the city in a 20-vehicle convoy, complete with ambulances and armored vehicles. Now, if you were concerned about climate change being driven by humans and the burning of fossil fuels, which produce carbon dioxide, you probably wouldn't behave like that. You'd probably just get on the phone and talk about climate change, but they didn't. And none of the global warming experts who were telling you that your suburban is a sin said a word about it. In fact, they were busy lecturing you about the rest. Your wood stove, your gas stove. You remember in January, the gas stove ban was a conspiracy theory. Anyone who was worried about the government cracking down on their kitchen was a nutcase, a Ruby Ridge level wacko. The New Republic reported back then and we're quoting, People are getting real heated over a gas stove ban that isn't happening. Note and appreciate the pun. So that's always the first move. You're imagining it, crazy person. Then we move forward a couple of months, and the conspiracy theory is actually, well, it's, it's true. And if you disagree with it, you're a wacko. This is from Politico, a political blog in Arlington, Virginia, yesterday. Quote, New York nears deal to ban gas stoves in new homes. <laughs> so they say something. If you take it seriously, it's your fault because it's not true. And then they tell you that, in fact, it is true. And if you don't agree with it, you're a criminal. You see this a lot. You're told something. You're required to believe something that's clearly false. And if you don't go along with it, you're banned from social media and harassed. And maybe you can't use Airbnb. And maybe if you keep talking, JP Morgan cancels your bank account. And then once you submit, they admit, actually, yeah, you're right. All this does, all this level of lying does, is make people cynical, not simply about the people in charge. You have every reason to be cynical about them, but about words themselves. Is there a connection between a word and a physical observable reality? Well, I'm not sure anymore. So one of the great lies going on right now is that the former president of the United States, who is also once again the frontrunner for the Republican nomination, Donald Trump, has committed some kind of crime in the state of New York, for which at some point he's going to be indicted. So the Biden administration has made a practice now for over two years of picking federal judges based on the way they look, based instead of their competence. And the confirmation hearings for these judges are as painful as you would expect they would be. I don't know what is going on, but when they start, look, it's fine if you have flaky sociology professors or administrators at Stanford or whatever, who cares? But airline pilots, heart surgeons, and federal judges, like, why are we allowing this? Well, I, I think this is the entire point for progressives. I mean, you have a judge uh, that doesn't know Article 2 or Article 5 of the Constitution. This gentleman that doesn't know the Brady motion, the Brady rule, again, as you pointed out, where hundreds, if not thousands of Americans are being denied this basic right because of their political views.
but it really does highlight that the Biden administration, whoever's actually running it, is putting up activists masquerading as judges because the whole point is to get more votes to rubber stamp the left's social and political agenda. But even more so, Tucker, as you think about progressives, they've always viewed the Constitution and the law as obstacles to be avoided, but even more so maybe dismantled. So why would you even bother knowing about it? Because you're not going to pay attention to them anyway. And the whole point of progressivism from day one and until today is to, bend, to, to dismantle the original intent of the Constitution, separation of powers and all these other things that were put in place by our founders. They don't care about them. They don't want them. So why should you bother with them? Because you're never going to implement them because they're more a series of suggestions that you're trying to avoid. Well, here's why. Because if you don't have the rule of law and equal application of the law, you don't have civil rights. And I thought they were for civil rights. So I don't know why people like Lindsey Graham vote to confirm ju judges who don't know anything about the Constitution. Like, what is this? Because from the very beginning, progressive statists have been, have been the enemy of basic civil rights, of the rule of law, of property rights, of all these things. And over the last hundred years, it's like their colors are coming out more and more, and it's getting harder and harder to hide that. But this has been the whole point of progressivism from day one, Tucker. They have no intention of any of these basic rights. Their goal is the administrative state, and quite frankly, ultimately, it's, it's power, authoritarianism. And so the Constitution and the law are to be disregarded. They will make of them whatever they want them to be to achieve whatever they want. The, the, the point is not the original intent of the Constitution. The goal is not the rule of law. It's whatever they can make them to be to achieve what they want, right. and here we are.